go through a special one today. This is BMX Action, July 1984. This is a good one. This one's actually autographed by Harry Larry himself. Now, I know Harry's had a little bit of trouble, and he's working through it right now, So, but I still thought this was really cool. I did connect with my cousin James uh, over the weekend, and he was able to give me a whole box of magazines, so this one should... It should keep me oh, it should keep me busy for a while because I was looking through my uh, my magazine collection and I just was simply running, running really really low. I didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. This is July 1984. We got Harry Leary on the cover. He's doing the actual Leary, and this is awesome because I I never have the cover. Uh, he's got magazines without covers too, and we're going to run into some of those as well. And most of them, I, from what I saw, I think they're all BMX Action. He has some BMX World magazines that came out in the early 2000s. And I actually have some of those too. Uh, so we'll probably get into those later. Those magazines are really big. So that they may even be two-parters. So let's crack this one open and see what we got. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to start off here. Uh, we've got, Let me take the zoom off a little bit, guys. There we go. Okay, so we're going to start off with the, uh, Z, the Z wheel. Now... I never had any Z rims, never owned them. Uh, I know a few of my friends have actually had them. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, rumors about them being able to be flexed in half, and I've seen pictures of that in magazines. And I know, I think it was the uh, the Skyway Tough Wheels. People would say you could freeze them and they would straighten out again. I don't know the science behind that, uh, but I think these could be trued and made straight. Not a horrible idea, and a lot of people race with Z wheels. And I think they have a, a really unique look to them, especially when they're fresh and new, like this white one here. That looks really clean. But let's keep on going. What do we got today? We're going to do some trackside uh, racing, CW, NBL, War of the Stars, and Devonshire. We're testing the Mongoose Pro class. We got some hot shots. Greg Hill Training Program, Harrow's Corner, testing the Hutch Pro Raider. I remember the Hutch Pro Raider. And then finally, we got some outtakes. So let's, uh, let's get into it. Pretty typical start, Ukiah ad, Haro ad, we've seen this in the last magazine, so we'll just keep on rolling through. And here we go, we got the Formula One moving fast, we got Harry Larry in here. So he's on the cover, he's got a full page ad, so this is a good magazine for Harry. I think this one is one of the most uh, sought after magazines because of the cover. It's pretty iconic, uh, so I'm glad I got hold of this one. So this one, once I'm done with this by the way guys, I'm going to frame it, and I'm going to go ahead and just put this one in my office. It's, it says to James, old school rules, but I'm going to hang on to that one. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you guys something else. Let me hit pause really quick. Guys, I also got this one. Uh, so this is, again, from my cousin James. It says, God bless Greg Hill. And uh, this one we've already gone over. This is March 1984. But this I mentioned when I covered this magazine that this one is my favorite cover. So having this cover and autographed and having this cover autographed, that's that's pretty sweet. So I'm pretty excited. This is another one that we're gonna frame. Uh, so I'm, I've already done this magazine, so I'm definitely just gonna frame it. Once this one's done, I'm just gonna frame it, and then that'll be a wrap. I won't crack it open anymore. Uh, but it's okay, because I'm gonna have it on video. <laughs> okay, let's pause in the action. I'm gonna go put this one back. All right, back to the action. Let's get back into it. So we got the, we saw this ad last time. Uh, it's the Levi's ad. We went over that already, but check this one out. This is kind of unique. You got the Huffy Pro Thunder 400, crank up the power of the Thunder. Now, of the Pro Thunder, excuse me. Now, I like this bike for a couple of reasons. Um, even though this is a, a store-bought bike, I very much seriously doubt this is actually chrome molly. This is probably like more of a mild steel, but it's got like a CW type handlebar on it. It looks like it's got official Diacomp type brakes on it, and it looks like uh, it's not a power disc, but it gives it the look of a power disc. And then the, the forks look pretty nice. It's got kind of a blue anodized finish on it. Uh, so overall, I mean, it's a great bike for a kid in the neighborhood running around wanting to be a BMXer, but it's not a race bike in my opinion, but I think it's cool. For what it is and they probably sold a ton of these and what i like about huffy is you know they brought Stu on mike king came on gary ellis came on they got all these big names and down the road i think it was randy stumphauser uh was a huffy rider i believe even uh 
the SE guy. I totally I'm blanking out. Todd Lyons. He was on Huffy. So they've had some big names in it. I think it's a really good marketing strategy uh, for Huffy to bring on the big names because that's what sells bikes. Let's face it. All right. We got, <laughs> speaking of which, Stu Thompson starts stomping for under $200. We've seen this ad before. This is the Redline 500A. Pretty decent bike for what it is. I, I don't know the price on this one. It says it's under 200. I mean, that's a steal for what you get here. Because you think about it, this is under 200 bucks. You figure it's probably like 199. But then you look at this. If you walk into a department store, this is probably at least 100 bucks. You spend a little bit more, and you whoop, your game goes way, way up. So, yeah, this is a much more quality bike, but pretty awesome. Let's go to the next one. Let's see what else we got here. We got SR Turbo, Turbo, Turbox, Turbox. There you go. Little crank set, one piece crank set here. Motives. That's pretty cool. Looks like this guy's standing on some bars right here. Those are Gibby's size 11 and a half. He checks in at somewhere around 175 pounds. The plastic crossbar on the Glindos didn't even complain. So, in other words, they got a 175 pound man. Here, I'll pick this up so you guys can see it. And he's standing on the Glindo bars and it didn't bend. You know, so as much as we try, like to make fun of the bars and say, oh, that's kind of a gimmicky looking bar, it worked. You know, it definitely worked. All right, let's roll on to the next one, guys. Oh, here we go. We got a little Scott Clark here. Looks like Stu. And then Zoot Homestead. Check out Gray Kill's new house. Not too shabby. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> wow. Doesn't that look like uh, the uh, Brady Bunch house a little bit? Check out Stu here. <laughs> we got Scott Clark there. And check out the Flight Donuts. Those are really cool, too. I'm going to try to zoom in better, guys, so you can get a better perspective. It's harder to do this while it's on a tripod because I can't uh, hold it the, the camera right up against the magazine. But anyway, let's keep going. These are really cool. I like the uh, gloves here. These are gear gloves. And I like the look of these. These are really, really nice. Oh, there it is. He's <laughs> I have run across this ad at least three or four times. And I cut this part out all the time the winning is dirty business i used to like hanging it up everywhere in my room and it's actually in one piece because my cousin has a magazine that's untampered with i love this vans ad look at that one that's amazing <laughs> i remember the vans box is looking like this guys check this out you got the blue and white box the vans off the wall you got Stu in there it looks like martin and it's, i think that's woody it's up there that is really, really cool. I love that ad. I don't think I've ever seen that one. I want to be honest with you guys. I, I, I don't think I've ever even looked at this magazine before because I didn't always subscribe to the magazine. Sometimes the subscriptions would run out and I'd be running to the store and buying them. And for the majority of my time, I would really just buy the magazines in uh, you know liquor stores and things like that, drug stores. So sometimes I'd miss one or two. And this is one that I'm pretty sure I've never seen. I remember this Predator ad, so let's keep moving. Aha, here we go, Devonshire. CW NBL War of the Stars, Devonshire. Now this is a great, great shot. Who took this one? That's Bob Osborne. I should never have doubted. Look at the quality of that photo, guys. You got Greg Hill, which looks to be, I don't know if that's Scott Clark. I don't think that's Scott Clark, that Murray writer. We got a profile writer back there. That's probably Harry Larry right there. Check out the champion colors, Kuwahara, and what looks to be Scorpion. That's awesome. That is just, man, that is a great, great shot. I love it. Great shot. Okay, let's go on. Oh, my gosh. Guys, I'm excited right now. <laughs> I've never seen this one before. I know I haven't seen this because I would 100% remember this awesome photo, again, by Bob Osborne. Look at this shot. Oh my God. I would have definitely, if this was mine, it definitely would have been cut out. And to get a, get a magazine, I'm sorry, to get a picture like this, you literally have to take the staples out and slide these things out and then tape it together to make one picture. So you really would have to sacrifice your magazine. It's going to be pretty much junk when you're done. But this is amazing. Check out Gary Ellis. This is a really, really cool picture. I love this one. Wow. This is, uh, let's see, it says, this particular pro semi would not exactly be the best time to saunter across the track. Clint, Gary, Eric at full grunt. 
Clint ruled in the main. Gary took second. Eric third. So the Kuahara boys took one and two. Um, I'm going to see if I can find this race. I, I'm going to go through uh, YouTube. A lot of times I find stuff like this. I think this would be an excellent, excellent uh, video to review. Wow, that's just a beautiful shot. Oh, what do we got here? Rich Zagars. Check this one out, guys. That's awesome. That is just a great shot of him right there. Love that. I got a video. Uh, I did a video review of him winning at the NBL Grands, which was really cool. Uh, Donnie Atherton was a champion here. This is a great shot here. Looks like Brent Romero right there. Look at uh, we got uh, Pete Longcaravage right there. That's just a really good, really, really good shot. I think that's Donnie right there. Donnie Atherton. All right, let's keep moving. Oh my gosh, this thing is just loaded with great pictures. Look at this one. Oh, <laughs> I love that. That is freaking awesome. And who is in this? Let's check it out. It says, uh, at Devonshire, Mike King. Yep, he's Eddie's brother. Uh, he was uh, being scouted by Rob Fade. and I'm sorry, he was being scouted by Redline and Huffy. He went, to, he went with Huffy. Check out who is behind Mike. And that looks like Doug Davis. So it looks like uh, Mike, this is Mike King. I've never seen this photo. So it looks like Mike is in between big time sponsors. Because I don't know, this looks like a bike shop jersey. It's definitely not a Haro jersey. Uh, and he got picked up by Huffy right there. So that is really, really cool. Got the typical little kids in staging. Love that. Man, this is just a great, great magazine. What do we got here? Okay, here we go. Now we got the, uh, the actual track. Oh, let's check out these pictures real, really quick. So we got same jump, same angle, same numbers, different styles, but the same result. First in the respective classes, Sherry Elliott on Skyway, Debbie Cal uh, Calso on CW, two real fast ladies. So let's take a closer look at those pictures. Wow, look at that. I'm a huge Skyway fan, man. You know, I, I just love it. I had, C I had a CW as well, too. I like the CW colors as well. Everything about this is just perfect. The old school stuff is just the best. And then you're looking at the track itself. Uh, the track itself looks pretty cool. I mean, this one, uh, it's not as simplistic as some of the uh, some of the tracks that I've seen uh, in the past. As you can see this one, you got your starting hill. There's a little roller right here. You got your berm right here that looks like it's a little bit rough, a little bumpy. Then you're going to go to a slight uphill, hit a step jump, come down the step jump, up another step, and over a very peak speed jump through the, this next turn, which is going to bonsai you down. I imagine you're picking up a lot of speed right here to another berm, to another turn here, which is more or less probably a flat turn right here, to a set of doubles, and a very peaked speed jump. These were really tough, for, especially for shorter guys like me, because this to speed jump wasn't as easy for a shorter guy as it is for the taller guys. Then you're going to go through a bank turn here, which doesn't really look like a berm. It looks more flat. A couple small speed jumps here. And then two into a set of triples. And finally, the finish line is underneath this stand, which I'm assuming was the scores were right here, which is awesome because they're elevated and they're not going to get in the way. Wow, this is a nice, nice track. I really like it. Okay, let's zoom back out for a second, guys. All right, here we go. Okay, that's a nice picture here. Who's this one? Oh, that's Matt Hayden. It was flawless in his motos. He won everything, and... Uh, that was in his three classes, but in the semis, he started popping out. He only dusted 12 experts, picked up a pair of seconds, and in his two, in his two classes. So, really cool. Really cool. Let's move on. Okay, we got a profile guy here. And then that's it for the race. But that was really, really cool. We got the Hutch Bars here, Terry Cable, and then Team Cycle. Oh, man, there's just a lot of ads in here. But this magazine is really, really way, well laid out. We got the Kuahara ad here we've seen a few times. Really nice bikes. And then this is really cool because the, the book itself, the complete book of BMX, was $9.95. Now, I've personally looked at this book, and I know that it's a very quality book. I went through it. Uh, it even had how to build a quarter pipe in there. It had the plans in there. Um, and it's only $9.95. That's pretty awesome, and it's so cool that it's still attached to the actual magazine. I really like that. This thing is, man, it's a shame that I'm gonna frame this. 
<laughs> All right, and then we have the uh, IRC ad. Love them with, the, I guess these were motorcycle tires. This is a quality looking tire if you look at it. I like the knobby on it. And check this out. This is really insignificant, but do you see this number plate here? This is what the ABA would issue you when you were uh, first starting off. You get that square number plate with the numbers already attached. And then it has your district. See, he's California 7. I was Cal 4 because I lived in Northern California in the Bay Area. And that's really cool. I remember having that. I think I mentioned in another magazine, I really wish I would have held on to stuff like that. Like, I'm pretty sure I ended up peeling the numbers off and doing stupid things with it. Um, but, man, you know, when you're 12 years old, you're an idiot. Who knows? I was going through puberty. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. We got a Robinson ad here. And who's this young lady? Tawny Thomas. Second place at the Grand Nationals, district number two. And then you got, uh, oh, check it out. We got Brian Patterson with Zap Pads. I don't remember this with just the bars like this. That's really different. But you know what? I'll tell you what. I, it's hard for me to remember uh, Brian using Zap Pads. I can, I can picture Greg using them. I can't necessarily picture Brian using them because I know that Patterson... Guys usually use the Patterson pads that were from California Light. Uh, so I'm going to have to pay closer attention to see if I can actually see him using the Zap pads. All right, let's keep moving. All right, here we go. We got the Mongoose Pro Class. This is a really cool setup. And this bike now is virtually available now. But I mentioned before, I've actually got a close look at the uh, reproduction of this bike. And... I don't know. I mean, to me, it just looks kind of like a cheaper version of what this bike actually was because check it out. This is all chrome molly, great handlebars, former, you got your loop tail here, chrome molly fork, chrome molly seat post, cash max seat. This is a very good bike. I, I actually think this is a really good bike. I wonder what the cost for that is. We're going to have to take a look at that. And holy crap, check out Eric. Look at Eric group. Look at the wall on that thing. He's just diving down this cliff. You know, I remember stuff like this when I was a kid, and it's never as scary as it seems when you're going down it, but that's really cool. All right, let's keep going. Golly, guys, these shots are just amazing. Let's take a closer look. Check out Eric here. That's a great shot, and we got Eric over here. Great, great shots. <laughs> look at all the mirrored lenses. Uh, mother, I'd like to introduce three boys I met today. Mother... <laughs> that's pretty cool pretty cool i still think mirrored lenses are such an it's such a great touch to put on your with your helmet and it doesn't take a whole lot you know to have the mirrored lenses and it just makes a big difference i think everybody pretty much rock, rocks them now i used to have to get this kind of stuff like the oakley goggles the oakley face mask because i've actually had this set up before and i would actually have to go to a motorcycle shop in hayward california I forgot what it was, man. I want to say it was Kawasaki, but I could be completely wrong. It might have been Honda, Kawasaki, something like that. But anyway, you'd go into the motorcycle dealership itself, and where all the motorcycles were. And then if you went outside, there was a set of stairs that would go up. And on the second floor, it was all the products you can buy. So you can get helmets, goggles, gloves, pants, everything. And it was motocross stuff, but you know a lot of that translates over to BMX. So that's where I used to get a lot of my stuff. All right. Oh, wow, look at this flatty. Wow, who's doing that? That's RL busting that out. Look at that, guys. Wow. That is, that is just sick. Here's the, here's the specs for the bike. Mongoose Pro Class. Very well, very well put together. Okay, that's an Aero seat. It's not Cash Max. The bike itself, complete, is $450. So, your opinion, guys, is it worth $450? Oh, I don't know, man. Like if uh, back in the eighties, I, I think if I was going to get a high end race bike at 450, I don't think I would go with mongoose. I only because I don't know. I didn't think as mongoose as a higher end type bike, but it is well put together. So I guess you could say it's worth the money. It's got very good components on it, but 450 is pretty, pretty hefty price tag uh, for a mongoose. But again, it's pro class. So it's top of the line. So you got to think that's basically what the GTs are probably going for and so forth. And then we got this 360 right here from RL. Here, I'll move it over here so you guys can see it. RL busting the 360. That's really cool. And then we had a, wow, man, Eric was only 20 years old. 
in this interview. That's pretty awesome. He was national number one at the time. That's really cool. And we won't read all this, obviously, because it's, it takes too long, as I mentioned before. But that's really, really cool. All right, let's go to the next one. Man, look at all these shots. Dang, this magazine's good. What do we got here? Can you dig it? A quarter pipe carved into a California adobe trick. Re-entry. Hairy, though. So it's kind of like a uh, quarter pipe in the dirt. That's a sick-ass picture. I love it. Okay, let's keep on moving. We're doing really good today. Mongoose Pro Class still going on here. And then, oh my God. <laughs> Hold on. I got to take a second. Because when I see something with this much radness, I need to take a breath. <laughs> this is freaking amazing. Now, this is the kind of stuff, guys, that when you would look at this in a magazine and all you can think about is, I got to go outside and I got to ride my bike. I got to go jumping. I got to get to the races. I got to do something. Because... This would just get you so insanely pumped up. I, that picture, it's not, it's not that the, the difficulty of the jump, he's just tucked, it's just hairy, he's tucked, he's going down the back, back side of a jump. But the way they, they execute these photos is just amazing to me. And again, this one is for photo by Jim, it looks like uh, Casimus, Jim Casimus. Not sure, he must have been working for BMX Action, but... Jesus, man, that is just super iconic. Love it. Let's keep going. Oh, check it out. We got the A team for SE Racing. Toby Henderson's fully on now. Rod Beckering, rest in peace. He's back there. And we got uh, Bubba Hayes, 17 expert. And then Lonnie Tayton, 14 expert. Really, really cool. And look at Brian Lopes in there at 12 years old. Brian had a pretty good long career with SE because I know he was older running for SE too. So that's really, really cool. Ultra Glide. <laughs> Can you read Ultra Glide? <laughs> I don't know. That sounds like a lubricant to me. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty cool. It's a, it's a, it's a cable. Let's, let's get our minds out of the gutter. We got the Pro Class wheels. This is a really cool ad. Looks like, uh, man, this guy, uh, Pat Romano, doing his tricks over here. Let me get you a better, closer look at that. That's really cool. Really cool. And then the flight donuts, we've seen that. And check out the wheels from Pro Class. That pierced wheel, that just looks really, really cool. And you got all the handlebars here. Their version of the, uh, well, they call it a power plate instead of a power disc, since it's not shaped in a disc type thing. That's kind of their own thing. That's really cool. I never noticed that before. Let's keep going. This is a really cool ad. I mean, Sean Texas, I, you know, as I've been looking at, more and more videos and watching more and more races and making YouTube videos out of them, I start to appreciate more of how what type of racer these guys were as opposed to just looking at them in magazines. Sean is really, really strong, really powerful rider. And Sean has so much horsepower, I noticed in several races he would just blow up, you know. And it's really because it's just he's just so strong and powerful and these bikes were just they were just technically not big enough for him. I think that was part of the problem. But I will say this about Sean Texas. Somebody posted on Facebook. They were showing uh, the Vet Pro class. And this dude was racing Vet Pro. I didn't see him in there because I only looked at the semis and looked at the finals. So I didn't actually see him racing. But they said he did not embarrass himself. Meaning he was in there mixing it in at 60 years old. And he's racing Vet Pro. You know, I, you know what I think the USA BMX should do? is because we got guys there now that are legends in the sport that are now getting up there. You know, they're, they're in their late 50s, 60 years, and, and 60s. You know, I would like to see, we got Elite Pro, we got Vet Pro, and I'd love to see like a Masters where you're going to be like 50 and over if you're getting in the Masters class because you're going to take these guys that are considered pro-level riders, but we're going to basically separate them from the experts and just call it the master's class. I don't think it needs to really involve money, although it would be nice if it had money involved, but I think that would be awesome to see some of these guys. You know, you got Eric Group, Sean Texas is in, still in there. Uh, Terry Tanet is a beast. He's still out there. Uh, Pete Longkarovich just came back out there. Harry Larry's out there. We got all these big name guys that I'd love to see them have their own thing so they're not just mixed in with the rest of us. Although, you know, I got to say something about that too. 
to be an older ex an older expert or an older writer that gets to mix it up with legends that's got to be awesome too so i guess i could see both sides of it let's keep on going we saw these ads in the last magazine with the amy grips and we also looked at the vector ad and greg hill's training program so this is pretty cool now uh, you look at these trophies in the background, I really like it. And the shot itself is really unique because this is Greg's obviously weight bench and they shot underneath the weight bench and framed him perfectly in there with the trophies in the background. You see the uh, world championship number one plate in the background and along with uh, looks like some racing memorabilia back here. So even though this looks like a simple black and white photo, it's actually really, really well laid out and framed. It's, it's like perfect for what it is. I think that's really cool. All right, let's keep going. We're really moving fast tonight, guys. I'm kinda, but it is 25 minutes, so I probably, I wanna try to keep it in the 30 minute range. You can see Greg working out here. It says uh, behind the neck press, great for the shoulders. Greg's pretty strong dude. Still is today, obviously. And then uh, there's Greg right there. You know, to be a pro, I mean, you got to be in the best shape ever. I, I'm actually not even pro. I, I was noticing in some of the older amateur classes, these guys are in such great shape. And, you know, the, the uniforms today, they don't they don't lie. I mean, they're so skin tight. You can see who's in shape and who's not. You can't hide under a loose jersey or baggy pants. You, that The uniforms today just tell on you. And you can see these guys are just in insane shape. All right, let's keep. Oh, I love this ad. All right, check this one out. This is the Patterson ad. I love the Patterson frame. And it doesn't look like it has forks. It's just the frame. You got the seat posts in there, the handlebars, and of course you got Brent, Brian, and or Brian, Brent, and Richie. Oh, he's holding the forks, I'm sorry. So that is really, really cool. I think it was uh, about this time, around this time, 1984, 1985, one of my really good friends, his name is Mike Rodriguez, and uh, he passed away a couple of years ago. So rest in peace, Mike. But Mike got this, uh, got a Patterson frame and fork for Christmas. And I remember that dude called me Christmas morning. And he goes, Danny, guess what, man? And I go, I go, what's up, dude? He goes, I got a brand new Patterson frame and fork. And he couldn't wait. He started putting it together that day, Christmas day. He was so pumped up that he got that Patterson, you know. And I, <laughs> I don't know what he did with it. Me and Mike kind of lost contact with each other, and then we reconnected years later on Facebook when we were like in our 40s, uh, so I don't know what he did with the bike, but I really wish I would have asked him, what did you do with that Patterson, dude? I will buy it from you right now, <laughs> but that's pretty cool. All right, let's keep going. Oh, there's a card. Oh, there's nothing. That's just a blank card. I wonder what this was for. That's really weird. We got more of Greg Hill's training program. He talks about sit-ups, weight training, flies, behind-the-neck press, curls leg curls, pull-ups, just simply riding and variety. So I think it breaks it all down. I bet you anything, um, if I took this magazine out and just try to follow this regiment, it would do nothing but put me in shape. So not that I'm not in shape, but you know what I mean. We've seen this ad already. This is a cool one for GT. Very cool. Love the wings on the GT. That's just so badass. I love it. We've seen this one before with Greg. And then American Pride, that's different. I don't remember. I actually do not remember this. This looks more like a 70s bike more than an 80s. If you think about it, look at that. I'm trying to get it so it's not reflected. But that's really cool. It's, it's uh, Somebody drew that, so I think that's really nice. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, we got the Oakley. I think these were, yeah, B1Bs. I had a set of these. I talked about it in a previous magazine review. And mine were blue on the outside, yellow in the middle. And I used them on my Skyway for a little while, and then I flipped back to Amy Grips again. I'm like, yeah, they're kind of expensive, and I rip them and tear them just like anything else. Cool JT ad, like this one. We've seen it a million times. And oh my goodness, check this out. We got Haro's Corner, another radical rendering from the exceedingly overactive imagination of Bob Haro. And you got a guy sitting here on his Schwinn, sitting on a motocross gate, <laughs> and these guys, oh, look, it's Bob Hanna. And they're looking at him like, who the, Johnny O. They're looking at him like, who the hell is this guy? And why is he up here? He got the one-footed start. And I, here's the iconic Bob Harrow signature on the bottom. How cool is that? How cool is that? This magazine is epic. Uh, this is one of the favorite ones I've done so far. I really like it. 
Uh, we got the racing tips from Eddie and Harry. And then we got the profile ad with Eric Group in here. Uh, oh, check this out. Holy moly. Totally new BMX action subscription sweepstakes. Your chance to win an Ultra Qual Diamondback Turbo. Absolutely free. $500 value. Now, this bike, I'm going to say something about this really quick. Let's take a close look at it. Now, this bike was sitting, I'll never forget, guys. This bike was sitting at FM Cyclery in Fremont, California. I think there was a couple of them. The seat was kind of suede, too. You can't see in this picture because it's black and white. And it has a smoked finish on it, kind of a black smoked chrome finish. The nipples are black, wheels are chrome. This bike stock as is is perfect. You don't really need to do much of anything unless you don't want to run the front brakes. But anyway, long story short, I saw this bike and I remember telling my cousin, I want that bike. I'm going to start saving money. And I was putting all kinds of change and whatever I can get my hands on. And I had this little cigar box and I used to keep all my money and change in there. And I'm like, I'm not going to stop until I could buy this bike. Never had it, never bought it. Uh, but it's... It's awesome. There was one dude I, I was I used to ride with him and race with him. His name was Hector, and he had this bike. He used to ride all the Diamondback, all the Diamondback gear. He loved this bike. He, that was like his thing. He didn't want to ride anything else. We got the CW Phase One as a complete bike, which is very cool. And then uh, oh, here we go. We got MT Racing Silver Fox and the 1984 NBL Grand Nationals in Derby City. Uh, BMX, Louisville, Kentucky. Pro purse is $18,000 for the pro purse. If you win a pro, you win seven grand. Pro cruiser was worth four grand. And pro awards, another two. You're talking some serious money here, guys. Eight, nine, ten, eleven thousand, thirteen thousand. Yeah, thirteen thousand dollars if you tripled. You can win, potentially win thirteen thousand dollars if you triple. I mean, I know that's asking a lot. You know, you're going to have to be like a super stud to triple, but man, that is a crazy purse. I love this bike. It's not bad. I used to race a kid in Sonol BMX that had one of these. He was, he was a smaller kid, and that's saying a lot since I'm not that tall. Um, he, was not, he was a pretty cool kid. I used to beat him all the time, though. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, let's go. Hutch Pro Raider. All right. Now, let's get your opinion, guys. Do you guys like the uh, Hutch number plate, right? It's smaller pretty sleek looking, versus the Haro number plate, the Haro 1B. I like them both. I think they're both awesome. I think uh, I've been really thinking about actually buying one of these again uh, because they have the retro ones. They're like 50 bucks. So I was thinking about buying one, putting it on my Skyway. They just look so big now because we're so used to looking at the smaller number plates, so they look huge. Uh, but I was actually considering getting, uh, getting one, you know, because I really liked it. You know which... Haro plate's my favorite, though. If I had to rank them all, there was a Haro flow panel. It was just a regular Haro plate. It looked like it had the same shape as the lightning bolt one, but it had small slits in it on the bottom and on the sides. That was one of my favorite number plates. I wish I wouldn't have sold that. Big dummy, man. This is a good shot right here. Who's riding? I can't even tell. Let's take a look. Pick this up. Sorry, guys. It says here, Pro Raider... Uh, shares the same geometry as the Hutch Expert Racer. That's Monty. Gide oh, it's Monty Gray. Okay, so Monty Gray. And he's the McDonald's guy. He was in the McDonald's commercial I just put in my last video. Looks like, uh, let's see, Monty sailing over Gibby's camera. So he got, that's all Monty in this one, Monty Gray. That's really cool. So the Hutch Pro Raider is basically the intro to the Hutch bikes. And uh, again, this is a really cool looking bike as well. It has its own sort of power disc on it, much like the Mongoose. And as a matter of fact, I would, I would say this one's $239, and the Mongoose Pro Class is $400. So I'm, I would really have leaned more towards the Hutch because it's just it's a cooler looking bike. I mean, I think the, the Mongoose was probably higher end. Sorry, guys, I'm fighting the hiccups. But I don't know. I think I would have got that one. Okay, let's keep going. There's Monty right there. Mick Monty. So here's what, this is cool because that was from the uh, commercial. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, because he was in the commercial. Love it. It's a great shot of him right there. Man, where did our youth go, man? He was 12 years old. So if he was 12 years old here, he's like, I don't know, he's like 50 years old now. So it's just, my gosh, time's a real son of a bitch, guys. 
All right, let's keep going. These are cool looking pedals, MKS. My cousin Eric, uh, he, God rest his soul as well, man. He had these pedals, these black ones. I remember these, he had them on his CW. And uh, not my favorite pedal, but I rode his bike several times. I didn't feel any issues with them. So they seem to work pretty well. We got the super light tubes. And this is a really cool ad, Team Murray ad here. Murray launches its latest ground-to-air missile. <laughs> Team Murray, I like that one. Got your dyno here. I've had one of these brake guards, dyno plates. These hats with the little flaps in the back. I'm embarrassed to say I had one of these. And I used to wear it around. I'm really embarrassed to say that I wore that. <laughs> Let me get a drink of water, guys. All right, sorry about that. These are really nice looking pedals. We've got the Galindo ad here. So obviously this, this Glendo is seriously backing Kuwahara. He's got two of the heavy hitters running these bars. <laughs> I love this ad for Mongoose. And Ghost Riders of the Sky. Wow, bike's way over there. He must have just let it go intentionally. Oh man, that's not good for your ankles, my, my man. All right, and that's it. Check out the great, check out the Cycle Pro ad. <laughs> Looks like kind of like what you would expect to see in like Tron or something like that. I love Tron movies. And that's it, guys. Here's the iconic uh, Comp 3, Tioga Comp 3 tire. This has probably been on the back of a million magazines. Best tire ever made, in my opinion. But anyway, guys, that is it. That is a wrap. 36 minutes again. My goodness. But we got it done. BMX Action, July 1984. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. I got it. At first it was hard. Nobody believed me. Ever since then, I'm making it clear. This my year. This my year. I hustle in the dark with a bright my head. Get the bright idea.